This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel, and I'm going to give you a stock market update. So we just finished February up over 5% for just the month. We're up four months in a row. So let's go through the sentiment. Let's look at overbought, oversold. Let's look at the volatility, and we'll look at the trend and momentum in four time frames and see what we can, where we're expecting to go from here. So just briefly, if you have any interest in learning more about uh, using MACD and ADX in multiple time frames, along with price structure, a lot of different uh, material, I am offering the book at a uh, discount uh, through a PDF or an ebook. Um, if you have an interest, go ahead and take a look at rablestockresearch.com forward slash book. Okay, let's get started with the market conditions. And uh, we're going to start with the sentiment, which did not change again this week. Uh, the bulls are just kind of hovering around. There's not a lot of changes going on. Uh, the market had a hesitation week and then a really big week last week. And this week has been very quiet. Um, we'll get into that in a second. But the, the, the really hasn't been much of a change in the sentiment. It's still lingering up in an area which I would consider to be more on the bearish side. But this is why it's not a timing tool, right? We're into this bearish uh, uh, level, but there's, there's no signal of sellers yet. So until that happens, uh, we know this is the backdrop. And we're even got the overbought, oversold oscillator. It's been three weeks in a row up above 88. This is 88 two weeks, and now it's 89 this week. I mean, we're just, it's not like there's a, a huge change developing um, right now. The only real change in the market conditions this week is the daily volatility dropped. Uh, so it went from negative to neutral. So I'm going to show you that in a second. But, you know, just keep in mind, these are these two especially are secondary indicators. They're they're what I use um, as more of a backdrop of the market conditions as opposed to in the forefront, like trend and trend and momentum are going to dictate uh, taking action. These are just giving me an idea of, of how solid the conditions are in place for a market to make a big move. This is not conducive to a big move from here to the upside, really. I mean, there's a little bit more risk now uh, in the market right now with the, um, with the being in an overbought condition and uh, the sentiment being higher. All right. But again, treat them as secondary indicators and not primary ind indicators. Now, let's look at this uh, average true range on the daily, which is the black line here is dropped down below the moving average. Now, that moving average is, is still considered rising. So it's 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 gone back to the neutral camp. All right. And um, but it, what's important is uh, we had this kind of spike move to the upside and now we've given all that back. This is not really like an or, or ordinary pullback. We've had, um, if I zero in on this, here's what we should recognize. So this was a narrow range bar. That was a narrow range bar. That was a narrow range bar. And that was a narrow range. We had four narrow range bars in a row. All right. I mean... <laughs> You know, I, I, I talk about this in my uh, compression-based swing trading course. And um, it, I, I don't know if I've seen the S&P do that four days in a row like that. It's pretty amazing, uh, really, that it was able to pull that off. But um, And we've gotten a little follow-through. Now, one thing I'll say about this is that a lot of times what will happen is you'll go, when you get that much compression, you'll go in the opposite direction you plan on going before you actually go in the direction you intend to go, right? So it's almost like when you're standing still and you're, you want to sprint forward, you, you're going to take a step back first before you take off, right? And you kind of want to think about it in those terms. It'll take a little stutter step, maybe in the opposite direction. That doesn't mean that's what's going to happen here. It might just go ahead and take off, but don't just assume that this is starting to the upside because you kind of have to treat this whole area here as a narrow range area because we've had four in a row. All right. Now, let's just take a quick second before I go into the uh, the uh, the ATR for um, the weekly, the volatility on the weekly. Look at what's going on on the 18s. So we've got all the 18s here. In fact, I'll just zoom this out so you can see we've got all 18s on this chart and um, this is the yearly quarterly monthly weekly and daily 
Now, there's a couple things I can tell you is that the weekly is starting to get pretty stretched away from the monthly. All right. But right now, I think what's somewhat positive is that the weekly and the daily are going up at about the same rate. I mean, if this is going to get ugly, like if we're going to have some kind of a climax, I would be expecting the 18-day the, uh, to start accelerating away from the 18-week. We're not seeing that. They're moving up at about the same rate. I mean, if I drew a trend line here and then drew a trend line here, do you see how they're basically parallel? They're not really going at a different angle. So if we get this angle to change, this will not go up as fast. And then we will have sort of kind of what we, we should be afraid of is where this accelerates away from this. And this is already accelerated away from this. This would be the kind of like the final thing to be worried about. Uh, it hasn't happened yet. And I'm not saying it will, but it's something we should be on the watch for um, at this point. All right, let's look at this average true range on the weekly, though, because look at what's going on. I mean, this continues to decline. This moving average keeps declining, and now price has actually turned down. It tried to rally a little bit, and the average true range tried to rally a little bit, and then it turned right back down. So um, from a weekly standpoint, that just sort of tells me there should be pretty strong support underneath, and I'd still be leaning towards a pullback. If we got a pullback, would probably be a buying opportunity is how I would be seeing it right now. Um, now, if if we get volatility, if we get some more volatility and we actually break the 18 on the daily, then I, I mean, in other words, it's probably going to happen at the same time. Meaning if this turns back up, we'll probably break the 18 and then we'll probably finally get a test of the uh, 18 week. And that's kind of what I'd be looking for. But until that 18 day is taken out, I don't think you want to guess it, even though we're really overbought and we've got, you know, a lot more bulls than bears in terms of sentiment. Um, OK, let's switch over to. Um, let's just get this to the uh, different time frames now. So. Um, we've got a pretty strong move taking place. This is. The monthly chart, and again, it's up 5.2% for the month of February. All right, that's four months in a row. That's really good period here, starting late last year, and we've had two bullish months to start the year. Um, you know, uh, what's interesting is, and it shows up in the um, the market conditions if you if you recognized it. We have had an RSI 5 on the weekly chart at 88 for three straight weeks. So overbought is not necessarily something, it's not really, it seems like it would be a timing tool, but it really isn't. You can't use it that way. You can linger and stay in overbought territory. What's more important than anything, especially after getting uh, the momentum divergence that failed um, on the daily chart, is now... We're in a trending move, and until the break, we break the 18, which is essentially right now the trend line, then I don't think there's any guessing that should be done. I don't think we should be looking for any versions of divergence or anything like that, um, especially when you look at the weekly. Look at the weekly strength. You see how the ADX is strong? The, the, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a drop off in the DI here, but not enough to, to make me feel like you know there's, there's something to be worried about. MACD keeps hitting a new high each week. Yeah, I mean, if you're sitting here watching these these uh, histogram bars, you'd be maybe you'd be worried, but I, I don't see it that way. I just see this as a strong move confirmed by momentum. All right, so if we get a pullback, you sort of assume that we're going to at least come back and test this high and most likely go to another new high. So that's what you should be thinking. Now, the problem is, is because it's not coming back and testing the 18 week. We have to assume that the daily is the key because we've tested it, tested it, tested it, tested it, tested it. Um, even this was a test, right? So we've, we've got a very important moving average line, really both of these lines working together. And again, if I draw this and then draw this, you see how those lines are basically parallel? So I almost don't have to look at the indicators when I have parallel moving averages, I know I've got a pretty solid trend underneath. The only way that's going to change is one of two ways. Either we're going to spike to the upside 
or we're going to come down and break the 18, break this uh, trend line, come down and test the 40, and then form some kind of an eight, a 40 to 18 bounce. That's the, it's one of the patterns out of my book and my courses. So, it, it, you know, one of two things has to happen. We either have to jet away and do an, go into a surging market phase. Right now, it's sequential wave. This is sequential wave, and this can go on for a very long time if it stays like this. Or we go surging market, right? Or we finally break. So one of two things to be on the lookout for. Now, let's just take a quick peek at the hourly. Um, I got a question last week about um, this RSI, uh, this ADX on the daily and saying that, you know, is this like a failure setup, meaning we're, we're going up and uh, this isn't really confirming. And I don't know that I can really say that because it's all happening above the 25 line. I mean, this pullback caused the it caused it to drop under 25 for a little bit. And now we're back above at 27. Normally, when I'm looking for that, I, I would see a little bit longer correction, and this would drop down a little bit more, and then we'd fail like that. It wouldn't be it wouldn't be taking place um, above the 25 line, and we wouldn't get greedy eye to make a higher high like I mentioned last week. You see how this was correcting, and then we went to a higher high that confirmed this breakout here. So we, I don't, I just, I got to tell you, I mean, I know there's divergence here, right? But I'm not looking for divergence right now. I am waiting for one of two things, a climax move or a break of the 18. I don't think it's worth being a hero right now. All right, now the hourly chart can help with that because if we go and we look at what's taking place here, we had one kind of harsh move on the hourly. It was kind of like a double double sell-off, right? And we got the ADX to, to climb a little bit there, but then it dropped right back down. And then, But none of them were as strong as this up move on the buyers. So the buyers caused this move. You have to learn. This is one of the keys to, I think, my course. And that's understanding that you have to know the difference between a negative peak and a positive peak. All right. This is really important. I do homework. On, I give guys homework in the courses and everything. You got to you got to know this stuff. Otherwise, it's not going to make sense. to You have to know the difference between the buyers and the sellers, green DI and um, and red DI. And then how that blue line, that ADX line is going to work uh, one way or the other in relation to what that's taking place. So we've had a couple harsh declines showing up in the price action, but not really to where the bears took over. Because look at what happened right away, we get this strong move to follow. And now we've gotten a consolidation pattern with no selling strength whatsoever. So I just don't see, I'm not saying this can't turn and break down. What I'm saying is that I don't, it's not giving me a heads up that that's going to happen. So stay on top of this, be on the lookout for either one of two things, a move to the upside or a break of the 18 day that causes it to roll over. Um, other than that, I think I got to qualify this as a bull trend with good momentum, but is extended right now. All right, everybody have a great week. Let me know if you have any questions.